so now we come to arrays so array is a variable that can store multiple values so we got two ways to declare an array in java so one is a static declaration one is a dynamic declaration so first of all let us see how we statically declare an array in java so this is the type of array so this is the type of array means that all values in this array shall be up to int so you can store an byte you can store a short you can store a char up to an int any value can be stored in this array this is the reference to the array this is the dimension of the array this is the operator to assign memory to the array and this essentially gives you the length of the array the number of members that the array has so the numbering of the array it starts from 0 and goes up to 1 less than the size of the array now what exactly is the size of the array now the size of the array in this case is 5 but not to manually mention this we have a property of an array which is length so this ar.length will give you the number of members that we have in this array so once you declare an array like this every member of the array gets initialized to a default value now in case of an int the default value is 0 and in case of a boolean the default value is true false default because every thing starts with a off state and we need to put down in a on state so default value for a boolean array is false for int it is 0 for a float it is 0.0f 0 .0 and so on so how we print this array so we'll take a loop we'll say int i equal to 0 i less than a dot length plus plus i and we print all the values through a loop put on the i as a counter so this will i will range from 0 to 1 less than the length because the last position that we can print is one less than the size of the array in this case the last position we have is four so we can also do like this we are So we'll just show what exactly the value is. So we'll just run this program. See now AR0 is 0, AR1 is 0, AR2 is 0. So every value is initialized to the default value of 0 when we statically create a array. Now once you have created an array, then you can populate the array by giving them values AR0 is this 1 is this AR2 is this AR3 is this and you can give any any arbitrary value to, to any position and then you can again you know print the array so this you now takes up the values that we have applied after the initialization what happens if we print the array name now when we print this ar which is a reference to the array so this will give you a memory or location which is the indirect location and does not refer to any you know actual location of where the array is stored but it will give you a just a reference memory location address so this this i this bracket shows it is an array i shows it is an int and this gives you an any memory location address corresponding to this array 
So this is the way we deal with the single dimension static nuclear array. And we have another loop which is a read only for each loop to print any array. Now this is the format of that array uh, for loop for we will say any int b in AR and then we'll print print ln. Now let us see how this loop is working. So what we say is that every value from this AR it will take and store in this B and we can then print this value B. So we have no position indicator. We don't know at any point of time at which position we are in the array. So we can't manipulate any member of the array but we can just print any value uh, from the array. So this is a read only for loop. Very convenient to print as compared to this. So in case you find it easy you can follow this loop. So this will just go through again. We take a variable whose data type is same as every member of this array. Assign any variable say b. Then in every iteration of this loop a value from this array will go to this b and then we can accordingly utilize this value b. So this portion will correspond to the value in this array. If every value in this array is a float, then we'll take float b. If any mem every member of this array is an array, then we'll have to take a array. So let us move forward and see how we can declare a dynamic array, single dimensional array. So in this case, we'll directly initialize the array with values rather than first declare the array and then populate the array with values. Just use the curly brackets and directly populate the array with values. So this is the dynamic declaration for an array where it is automatically initialized and then these values are you know, put down into the places or indexes they are assigned. So A, AR0 is 4, AR1 is 5, AR2 is 6, AR3 is 73, AR4 is 72. So we have two loops to print down. So I'll just show you the output. So this is the printout from the main for loop and this bottom is the printout from the for each loop. So this says AR0 goes to 4, AR1 is 5, AR2 is 6, AR3 is 73, AR4 is 2. So this is every value in this array has to be compatible with this data type. So I hope this clears one dimensional array. So in our next lecture we will take up multi-dimensional array.